Let's bring in Coach uh, Tevens, who joins us now. Coach, uh, welcome. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Do you remember McLovin when McLovin was at Dartmouth? Now, he was Andrew Perloff, but we call him McLovin. He was covering the Dartmouth football team when, uh, when you were there. He was the best. Uh, good personality. He was always where he was supposed to be, and he asked good questions. So uh, those are the guys I remember. You have no idea who Andrew Perloff is, right, Coach? That's what you're saying, <laughs> basically, right? No, he was a good one. <laughs> you, you've, got a, you've got a Dartmouth guy. He is a good one. Oh, yeah, he is. He reminds us of that all the time. All right. Uh, summarize the new policy here in the Ivy League. No more tackling in practice or limited tackling. Uh, essentially, once the season commences, there is no live tackling in practice uh, for the duration of the season. Uh, preseason, spring practice, tackling as has been held in the past is still uh, allowable, but it, in season, completely shut down. What prompted this? Uh, I've not been tackling for the last five years, and we've had decent success as a program, and the injury rate has uh, been reduced. And uh, I, I brought it up in a conversation, and uh, the coaches, I think we've got some very progressive coaches in the Ivy League, uh, and it, it wasn't a long discussion. Uh, people said, yeah, it's, uh, let's do it. And so it was unanimous, and uh, so we're moving forward in that regard. All right, go back five years ago. How did it change, like, uh, your players, uh, you know, the physicality there that you need, sometimes drills, teaching, tackling? What, what did your players think when you said this? Uh, they were resistant. My coaching staff was resistant as well, just because it was so outside the box. Uh, but, you know, looking at data, uh, concussive injuries occur more frequently in practice, uh, and I just wanted to keep my guys healthy. So in its place, we did a lot more bag tackling, and, uh, and there was not a template to follow. We basically created as as we went. But what we found is we become more efficient and proficient tacklers uh, and reduce the injury along the way. Do you teach tackling in college? We do. Um, you know, a lot of high schools do a wonderful job, but to, to hone skills and keep them sharp. And the hard thing is uh, it's the most injurious skill on the football field, but in its practice, the, le the, the least as a result. And by doing it with bags, we become a lot more consistent and I think a lot more confident uh, by player. And uh, we actually, the first season we went to this, our missed tackles dropped fi literally 50%. We cut them in half. Really? Why is that? Well, uh, we, I had that conversation with my defensive coordinator. It was quite simply, I think we practiced it more. Uh, when people hear that we literally we never tackle, a Dartmouth football player will never tackle or be tackled by a teammate uh, during his four-year career. But we average five to 800 tackles per year per defensive player. And we do it in tackle circuits, and we do it on bags, and we've got a, a mobile tackling device, an MVP as we call it, uh, that allows us to hit a moving target. So we're doing probably more tackling than most people in the country. We just don't hit each other. What would you say to that old school guy? Oh, we're getting soft. That's not real football. We're headed for flag football here. Well, we used to eat, uh, have salt tablets and uh, didn't drink water. Uh, and that didn't take us very far. <laughs> I thought that made me a better football player. It didn't do a damn thing for me, Coach. That salt tablets? What? That was exactly terrible. Right. Yeah, that, that was terrible. Uh, now, have you spoken to other college coaches or high school coaches about this? Can, can you see this as, you know, is this the next wave here of what we do with football and protecting? Well, uh, I do. I speak uh, nationwide. There's a group called Practice Like Pros. Uh, Terry O'Neill, uh, a former NFL exec, has put on, and uh, Mike Dick has been involved, Sam White, uh, Warren Moon, uh, Tony Dorsett, uh, Anthony Munoz, and a few others. And uh, I've been doing it for about three years, and it was very resist. People were very resistant way back when. And there's a greater receptivity. Uh, I do point to the NFL, and I heard you a little bit earlier. You know, the NFL last year, stats, stats that I have, uh, 16 teams uh, or 32 teams, 16 weeks, six weeks of preseason, they had four concussions uh, in practice all year long. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that we can do the same type of thing. And I, uh, coaches are becoming a little bit more aware, uh, a, little, a lot more curious. They ask a lot more questions. How do you do what you do? And a lot of requests to come up for uh, our spring practice to watch it actually in action. What if what if the NCAA said this is what we're adopting? Should they adopt this? How, how do you think the coaching community would uh, react? 
Well, and I say this frequently. I think the coaches are the guys that have to drive the change. Uh, the game is certainly under attack. There's not a day goes by you don't hear about concussive head injury. And and I I tell coaches either we change the way we coach the game or we won't have a game to coach. And I think if everybody stepped away from the paranoia about the taking things away and just said, hey, do we really need this much contact? Uh, the NFL and people say they're better athletes. Yeah, but it's uh, tackling is like riding a bike. You don't forget how to do it. And if we just didn't do it as frequently, statistically, the greatest number of concussions occur in practice, uh, spring practice, preseason practice. So if you limit them, uh, do you, obviously you're going to cut down your, your concussive injuries. And the side benefit for us is our, our frontline guys practice more readily. And, uh, and they've learned how mm. to practice. And if you look at a pro practice and you watch Dartmouth practice, they're very, very similar. And uh, the health result has helped us in terms of success on Saturdays. Yeah, you were conference champs, 9-1 last year. One of the better uh, defensive teams, maybe the best defensive team in the uh, Ivy League. So the results are there. Uh, one other thing, uh, Coach, would you like McLovin to come to speak to your team to fire them up? You, you haven't invited him. Uh, I'm curious as to why not. Well, we'll take uh, him and you, Dan. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm not. It's not a package deal. It's got to be McLovin. It's his alma mater. I, I'm not worthy of uh, being on an Ivy League campus. McLovin, could you give Coach just a sample of what you would be saying to fire up the Green Wave? Okay, guys. Uh, I had a three four. I was an English major. I want you to really work hard in class. Now, I could tell you a couple of uh, geology classes that are really easy to keep your GPA up. Now, let's talk football. Um, mm. You're never going to ta tackle another Dartmouth guy, and I never tackle another Dartmouth guy, so I'm basically exactly like you guys, and look where I am today. I am on the Dan Patrick Show, and someday, if you don't tackle in practice, you might get here. Let's go! Yeah! <laughs> what do you think, Coach? Well, I may have you talk to the cheerleading group first. <laughs> but, but we'll bring you down. As a Dartmouth guy, we'll bring you back, uh, uh, McLovin. Thank you, Coach. Good to talk to you. Thanks so much, guys. All right, Buddy Stevens, the uh, Dartmouth head coach.